Uh, good morning. This is Terry Fox. It is uh, March 7th, 2016. Uh, I'm not normally in the uh, mode of uh, specifically recommending tools or uh, promoting one tool over the other. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I've done so much DDR3 work lately that my friends at uh, uh, Mentor showed me some new uh, capabilities out of their uh, hyperlinks tool and uh, the bottom line of it is it just absolutely revolutionized my thinking on how to get these how to get through these things in a reasonable period of time so with that said let me see if I can do all this where I don't expose anything proprietary and we'll get on with it so I'll end this get that out of the way uh, so what I have is a uh, a design here. You can't see whose design it is. I'm not going to show you the board. But what I want to show you is that uh, when I went through and I simulated this, I used the uh, the, the DDR3 uh, batch simulation wizard. Instead of taking me, uh, say, four hours to go through the design, once I set it up, which is no mean task, you have to be very careful about setting this up correct, but once you set it up, it will go through and it will generate a lot of data in a hurry. So let me just show you what the data is that it would generate. So for example, here are a number of batch simulations and each one of these you can see from the timestamps that I was changing things and then going back through a full set of simulations just in a matter of maybe 10 or 20 minutes. So this is a big deal because realize every one of those files basically boils down to about uh, four hours work the way I used to be doing this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll show you how you use that data. For example, here I've just uh, opened up the, uh, the digital oscilloscope. Uh, one of the things that I can do is I can look. Okay, the first thing I need to explain is uh, how you read these files. I I had a set of files, so if I go up here, up here, here are a set of files, and you'll see that each time I use the DDR wizard, I was actually generating all this data in less than 20 minutes, and that also included the time that I went in and I modified things to try to get things corrected. So here we go. I start out with these January 6th uh, results at 9.23 open that up. There are reports that you can look at. So there would be, well that wasn't very friendly. Oh, I'm using the wrong tool. Uh, let's go through and uh, just look at the waveforms. These of course are Excel spreadsheet reports and you can read through those. Uh, but the thing I wanted to show you is this capability. So right here, if you look at this, this is net uh, TMA0. The driver is U13 and the receiver is U4. Here's the next one and the driver is 13 and the receiver is 5. Now if I want to see what the address lines look like at U4, I can select this one, Control Shift, select that one because again I'm back at U4, get that one at U4, get this one at U4, get that one at U4, get this one at U4. You see I could go right on down this list and pick all the signals that are related to U4 Uh, let's assume that I got all of those just for time uh, purposes. I'll open it up this way. So at this point, what you see is I see the, the overlay of all of those signals. And if I change the time base here a little bit, you see that this is the aggregate open eye that I had for this particular situation. 
So where I was going through all of the work to throw those things into an Excel spreadsheet, here all of that work has been done, and any SKU or any issue uh, is completed. So if I was looking at DDR3, uh, what would this be, about uh, uh, 7, 0.75 volts, if I go up, say, 150, that would be up to about 900. So that would be AC 150. That would be 900. Uh, so there's about 900 right there. And if I come around here and go down to about 600, that eye would be the open eye for AC 150 and that time in this particular case says that I've got a time of 344 picoseconds and I've got uh, over 300 millivolts in that eye. Now if you compare that to any way that I've done it previously this thing is absolutely fabulous. So in that case I was looking at the first SD RAM in that line now let's go back and let's erase it and let's look at the second SD RAM in that set. All right. So in that case that would be U5 in this case. So I'll take U5 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 You see this is 7 that's 6 that's four. U5, U5. Get some more in here. U5, U5. So I could go through and pick up all of the address lines. Uh, U5, I could get the control lines. U5. Okay, so this is just an example. So here is the I as regards uh, U5, and you notice that this looks a lot better. Well, it turns out in this design that U5 was simply farther from the uh, from the driver which meant that the reflections didn't didn't affect it so much so if I do that same measurement let me go up to about 900 here that would be AC 150 so I'm about 900 right about there and I'll come over to about uh, 600 here okay in that case, the I was uh, 701 picoseconds, and I had the, the uh, delta of about 300 uh, millivolts again, which would be appropriate for AC-175. So what is the bottom line of this whole story? The bottom line of this whole story is that anybody that is doing DDR-type designs, you absolutely have to go through and learn how to use the DDR batch simulation wizard then couple that with this ability to run all of those signals and then go through and and here are there was my first run my second run my third run my fourth run my fifth run my sixth run my seventh run etc you can look at all of those and when you have a problem let me go down and I'll show you a problem that we ran into with one of these. So let's close this. Let's erase. Now let's uh, load. And if I remember which one of these to pick up, let's get something uh, here. Let's get one of the later results. There was some place in here where we had a problem. Uh, Okay, here I'm getting an overlay of both uh, SD RAMs. What I'm looking for is there was one where it was way out of whack. No, nope, I don't see it. Here what you see is an overlay of both uh, SD RAMs. Uh, 
this I that would go from that to this is the furthest one. The one going from the green to there, that would be the closest one. And when I was going back and uh, going through and uh, selecting based on, for example, there's this is the driver is U13, the receiver is UM4. Here the driver is 13, the receiver is UM5. So if I pick every other one of these, just get the UM4s, then what I'm getting is that composite set and you see with UM4 we've got a little bit of an issue. Some signal here is significantly earlier than the others and it looks like that guy and not that one and this one. Okay so in this case I see that the overlay of, of all of these address lines with the exception of uh, this one which is address line 1 and this one which is address line 4 you see when I pick up 1 and 4 it's pretty obvious that those address lines are too short related to the other address lines so all I'm trying to point out is that this is the fastest way to go through and uh, get these things done and, and for me it's just been a complete revelation because I've I've been doing this a long time and I've been doing it apparently uh, wasting a whole lot of time the way I went about it so do yourself a favor if you're going to be doing serious DDR3, uh, DDR4, DDR2 type work uh, please go talk to your mentor people get a demonstration of the DDR wizard and also go through and uh, take a look at this ability just to load up multiple waveforms and again I'm just using the uh, uh, the more simple of the two uh, waveform viewers and the way that you do that is just go to the save load say load and then get into those that array of files open it up Oop. load when you get into the array of files then go through and uh, pick the signals that you're going to use and if you just read those they make a great deal of sense the way they named these things and you can make sense out of it load everything up and that is just the greatest thing since sliced bread as far as I'm concerned so anyway this is Terry Fox like I say I'm normally not in the mode of uh, recommending tools but this this was just too cool to not uh, not share with you. So we'll catch you on the flip side.